Hey, what's going on guys? Mike here, back in the aquarium lab. Today, I'm gonna be taking you through the entire setup process of my planted dwarf cichlid tank. I was super pumped to get this tank going. Dwarf cichlids have been on my list for a long time now, and so far, the tank is looking pretty good. As always, links to update videos can be found down in the description of this video, as well as a list of all the parts and pieces that were required to make this tank happen. Let's start the build. All right, so here we have an empty, cleaned out 20 gallon tall aquarium that I manually remove the rims from. I have a white piece of construction paper glued on the back. It helps with the filming and in my opinion, just makes for a great background color for a planted tank. This aquarium is sandwiched between my 125 and the workbench here, and it's sitting on top of a narrow dresser that has a ton of room to keep all of my gear. I have a Phoenix Planted Plus 24-7 LED on here already, and it will be the main lighting that we use on this setup. This light, along with all the gear we use to set up the tank, can be found in the description of the video, so make sure you check it out. Let's go ahead and start with the substrate. Before we add it in though, I start by placing a nylon bag filled with pea gravel in the right corner of the tank. This is where I want to have a big hill, and by using the gravel bag, I'll end up saving money on substrate. With that done, still before we add in the substrate, I begin to work with the hardscape. For this setup, I'm using Dragonstone. This stuff is awesome. If you haven't worked with it before, you're totally missing out, and I highly recommend that you get your hands on some. It's basically a super hard clay, but it's still pretty fragile. These stones have been heavily pre-washed, and they're all ready to go. So I start by placing one rock in the tank, and then I step back to visualize how the final aquascape will look. This part always takes me the longest, but it's well worth the extra effort. I got as far as just this first rock that would be positioned on the gravel bag, and then I decided that I wanted to add in my substrate. For this build, I chose to use Eco Complete. It's volcanic rock based and it has added nutrients that should help our plants have a good foundation for growth down at their roots. Now I have to say that Eco Complete is not my favorite substrate out there. I honestly think there's a lot of better options, but I haven't used it in a while and I just decided to go with it. You don't have to pre-wash this stuff, it actually comes bio-activated, so we can just pour it right into the tank. I ended up using about one and a half bags, just so I had about two inches covering the top of the gravel bag here, as well as all the other areas throughout the aquarium. After I smoothed things out a little bit, I began situating my main rock so that it was secure in the substrate but I soon decided to swap it out for another really cool piece that I felt looked a little bit better. You can see I ended up having both of these rocks come together to form almost like a broken bridge. The rock on the left is slightly in front of the one on the right to help create the illusion of depth. Next, I started to add a few accent rocks. I try really hard not to follow any rules when I aquascape. I think that some of the best scapes come from just random creativity, but that's not to say aquascaping styles or particular methods should be ignored. I'll put a link in the description to a page where you can learn more about what I'm talking about. I wrapped up the hardscape by placing a few small rocks behind the main left rock to create even more depth. After looking at the tank for a bit, I decided to cover both sides of the tank with more white construction paper. I think it just really helps keep your eyes focused on the main features of the tank, and it just looks super clean. It was at this point that I decided to position my heater into the tank. I picked up a new Aquion 150 watt. They're a brand that I trust, and you definitely want to trust your heater. Make sure you get a quality one that has a better chance of not going haywire. Now it was time for my favorite part, which of course is planting. For this setup, I chose to go with some slightly more difficult plants. I chose Dwarf Hairgrass and Monte Carlo, which are two really awesome foreground plants. The Hairgrass is just your standard stuff, while the Monte Carlo is derived from a tissue culture. I also have some Rotala Wallichi and some Hygrophila Lancelotta that I think will serve as pretty good background plants. I'll put links to where I got these plants in the description so you can learn more about them. Starting with the dwarf hair grass, I break up these long strung together plants into little plugs that we can easily add in with some forceps. I'm choosing to add plants before filling up the tank. This is a popular method, but keep in mind the substrate has been wetted down a bit to make planting easier. Once I have most of my grass placed around the base of the rocks, I then moved on to the Monte Carlo. Again, this stuff is tissue culture, so it contains an auger gel that you want to try and remove most of before you start planting. Doing this in the sink is a lot easier, or you can just get yourself a little tub of water to help get this stuff off. 
I break up the Monte Carlo into chunks similar to what I did with the hair grass. Planting this stuff is a little bit more tricky though than the dwarf hair grass, mainly because it doesn't have much of a root system, which is pretty typical for tissue culture plants, especially these small carpeting types. You just gotta do your best and don't be afraid to cover parts of the plants with the substrate in order to hold them down. I decided to call it quits with the Monte Carlo after a while. I have some left over that you'll see I added later, but then I switched over and I started to add in the high grow. I inspected the bottom portions of each stem to make sure that there wasn't any rot, and if there was, I snipped it off to expose fresh tissue that would have a much better chance of producing fresh roots. I added these plants to the back right of the tank behind the main stones. This plant is pretty slow growing, but does have the potential to reach up out of the tank. I think it looks great here, even now that you can only just barely see the top portion of growth. Now I needed something for the back left of the tank. I had that Rotala, but only a few small stems. So I decided to get my hands on some Pogo Stamon Erectus. This is another semi-difficult stem plant, but man, it's got a super bright green appearance and I thought it would look awesome in this tank. Not to mention, I got literally a ton of it for 20 bucks. Because these plants are so tall and top heavy, it is sometimes easier to plant them when the tank is full. Nonetheless, once they were in place, it was time to fill this tank up. Also, don't forget that if you guys ever need to take a break during your planting process, don't forget to spray your plants down with some water to help keep them hydrated and happy. So rather than start out with clean tap water, I used water from my established 90 gallon just like I did with the Avatar tank. By doing this, we're adding water that's already at an adequate temperature and it's loaded with beneficial microbes that will help get the tank going. I went back and forth from the 90 and poured directly onto some of the big rocks to help prevent disrupting the nearby substrate, which could end up uprooting the newly planted scape. Once the tank was full, I turned on my heater and adjusted my Phoenix LED to the right color spectrum and intensity. After filling up the tank, it actually looks pretty clear. The Eco Complete substrate doesn't give off that much discoloration, which is pretty nice. Now it's time to get our filter up and running. For this build, I'm just going ultra simple and I'm using an Aquion HOB that's rated for like a 20 gallon tank. This is a heavily used filter that I just had laying around the lab, but it's gonna work perfect for this tank. I have a cycled filter pad here that I'm gonna cut and place into the spot where the activated carbon pouch is meant to go. This is a simple way of getting good filtration without having to buy any replacement components. And since it's cycled media, we could theoretically add fish the same day. However, it's getting late, so I'm gonna let this tank run overnight and we'll continue our work tomorrow. So coming out to the tank the next day, you can see just how much clearer it is. I adjusted my LED to give off some more blue light and I think it looks pretty good. Now guys, remember this is gonna be a dwarf cichlid tank and it's also hopefully gonna be a tank where we can get some breeding action. So I got my hands on a small clay pot, which I broke off an entrance to. This will give our fish a place to hide and hopefully the female will choose this location to raise up some fry. To avoid ruining the aquascape, I placed the DIY cichlid mansion behind the left rock to where it's invisible when you're looking directly at the tank. Look in from the far right side and you can easily see the entrance. With that done, the tank was ready for some fish. So I went to my local fish store and picked up a male and female pair of Epistogramma panduros. These fish are really cool, but I also wanted some top level swimmers in the tank that would be compatible with the cichlids. I chose to go with 15 gold tetras. These guys should go perfectly with one another and having these fish will definitely keep the tank entertaining when you're viewing it from a distance. So after floating them for about 20 minutes, I added them right to the tank, making sure to prevent as much store water as possible from entering their new home. No need to quarantine these fish since they're being added to a tank with no other inhabitants. I ended up just leaving the moonlight on for a few hours to help reduce overall stress as they transition. And when I came back out to the tank later to check everybody out, it looked like everybody was doing great. So I had to wait a few extra days before finalizing the equipment on this tank because I was waiting on my CO2 gear to get in. Once it arrived, I quickly made a few modifications to my dresser so that I could keep cords and tubings tucked out of the way. Aquatech of California was nice enough to donate a few major components for the tank, obviously related to CO2. 
They supplied me with their mini regulator with solenoid, which is made for a 20 ounce paintball CO2 tank. This is gonna be a perfect size tank and overall setup for a smaller aquarium like this 20 gallon, and I don't have to worry about taking up a spot on my larger six way setup that runs all my other tanks. To diffuse CO2 in the aquarium, I'm gonna be using their three-in-one ceramic diffuser. It has an integrated check valve and a bubble counter, so we don't have to worry about any other add-ons. With the diffuser tucked back in the bottom of the tank and the CO2 running, the tank was pretty much done. You'll notice at first, the diffuser was putting out some pretty big bubbles, which isn't great, but a few hours later, it was streaming out super tiny ones, which is what you want. I was skeptical of using this diffuser at first, as you know, I don't really like to use this method of diffusion in general, but compared to other cheap glass diffusers that I have, this one actually performs much better. Once this tank had been set up for a couple days, it was a good idea to now check the water parameters. Using API test kits, we were able to get a pretty good idea of this aqueous environment. Because the tank is newly set up, these parameters will most likely change a little bit as time goes on, so I like to check them like once a week for the first month or two, and I do so a few days after each water change, which I do once a week. So about one week post setup, I added in some more Monte Carlo and Dwarf Hairgrass to hopefully speed up the carpeting process. All of the fish in here are doing great, and I can definitely tell that the Dwarf Hairgrass is starting to send out some new runners. The Panduros of course decided that they like to hang out underneath this gap here between the two rocks instead of lounging in their man-made mansion that I provided for them, but that's kind of just how it goes. We'll see what happens with this tank over the next few months guys and hopefully we'll get some breeding to take place. So I think that's going to pretty much do it for today's setup video guys. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the description for updates on this tank. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.